Well, hello and welcome to Jimmy Listen Total Nourish Channel. Today, I will show you how you can plug in your computer, what to think about, which cable goes where, and common mistakes. So, let's plug uh, in our uh, computer desktop. Alright, then we will begin with uh, connecting up the uh, cables to this PC. Ignore this cable, it's a random cable I connected in uh, for 12 volt for my LED lights, but all the other ones can be connected and disconnected, and I, I'm going to show you uh, basically what to think about and what to uh, connect where. So here you can see <clears throat> I have one of these uh, smaller motherboards, we have a graphics card down here, and we have the power adapter. So we can begin with uh, connecting in the power, which is just, you know, regular cable like that. And you make sure that this is turned off, we'll turn it on when everything is uh, connected in. So with the power away, we can check what uh, inputs we have here and what cables we have, which is a lot. So um, I use a stereo and my stereo is connected to this cable and uh, here you can see we have some different color coded uh, uh, like sound inputs. This is like digital or uh, optical sound which is better but most people use these ones. And uh, the regular uh, you usually use is the red and the green one and the green one <clears throat> is your speakers. And the red one is your microphone. And usually you can see small, uh, like it tells you what it is usually, but not always. But this goes into the green one. And if the green one doesn't work very well, you can try the blue one. It's sometimes a stereo output. Uh, the black and orange one on this one are <clears throat> um, like center speakers and uh, subwoofer. I don't have that. It can be different on some systems and sometimes the green um, output for the headphones or stereo is uh, black. So, but usually it's red and green. All right, then we'll of course have uh, this one, a regular Ethernet internet cable. And here you can see we have uh, two inputs here, one there, and one there and they both should work fine if it fits you know um, these are the same thing it's just uh, paired with USB and in this case USB-C so it shouldn't matter if it doesn't work for some reason you can of course use the other one all right, but we'll wait a little bit with uh, this one so we can see the USB ones because I'm going to make a little USB uh, connection explanation. So here we have a USB cable. If we look into here, we can see it only have four connections, not five, which means it's USB 2. There are something that is uh, USB 3, like this one, for example. You can see here, it has five connections inside. This USB 3 is for my external hard drive uh, and the USB 2 I showed you before, this one is for my computer mouse. Now, uh, connecting in your mouse and keyboard in USB 3 doesn't make them any quicker. You should use USB 2 if you have it. It doesn't really matter uh, since they only are limited to USB 2 speed. What you should be a little bit careful about is having several USB 3 hard drives connected in to a USB hub. Here we have a USB hub. Uh, if you have a USB hub, make sure the USB hub is also USB 3 hub if you're going to connecting USB 3 devices. A USB 2 hub works absolutely excellently if you connect in like mouses and keyboards and stuff like that. But you can of course use the USB 3 hub uh, for uh, USB 2 devices as well. Uh, on this computer, I only have USB 3 uh, outputs, but many computers have USB 2 outputs. Now make sure that the one you choose is uh, the same version and it should be absolutely fine. 
Now, my external hard drive, I will keep plugged into my, uh, uh, this one, little nice thing, so that I can easily unplug it and plug it because it has small buttons. And this USB 3 hub, I'll connect into uh, one of the USB outputs, which is USB 3. Now I have another little USB hub here where I have mouse, keyboard and um, camera and microphone and stuff like that. And it's absolutely fine to have like a lot of USB 2 devices in a USB uh, 3 hub. Because even though you kind of uh, use them all at the same time, you will not be able to overload the data. It's only if you have several USB 3 hard drives, which you constantly write to, and if you have that in a USB hub, like several hard drives, you only have one, and you have also your mouse and keyboard, uh, the hard drive might actually overload the connection, or the hard drives, if you have several, might overload the connection, which will cause lag um, and stuttering with your mouse and keyboard. Uh, so just, you know, to <clears throat> try to keep your hard drives, your external hard drives, that or USB 3 USB sticks that are constantly getting used, try to keep them away from the same hub which you have your mouse and keyboard. Otherwise, you should be able to basically have as many devices as you can on, uh, well, this one. Uh, so, my keyboard has two output, one throughput and one, uh, like, keyboard input. And uh, just to fit them all in a neat way, I have the throughput connected to my other USB hub, connected in there. And I have my, um, well, keyboard input. Uh, at one of the USB inputs there, and they could be switched, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's USB 2 anyway, so this is kind of a waste of a USB 3, um, you know, connection. Now all these devices are USB 2, so I might as well have a USB 2 adapter here, but I have a USB 3 adapter and that works as well, of course. Alright, um, now let's see here. We have my computer mouse, and I'm going to have that connected in to my hub because it doesn't really make it any slower to have it via the hub. Um, like the uh, like having a hub connected up between your mouse and keyboard, some people say it makes it slower, but that has been tested and it doesn't affect it at all. The speed connection doesn't, you know, get decreased just because you have a hub. Um, it's only if you overload the hub, and that you can only do if you have several external hard drives connected to it. But anyways, this USB 3 hub, I will connect it into this slot, so my mouse and uh, keyboard throughput and uh, other devices like camera will be connected here. Fantastic. Alright, now we can connect in the internet again, just because we have it there, and I always recommend you to have a wired internet, not a wireless internet, because wired internets are much less prone to, like, problems and um, delayed connection, you get higher speeds, basically, and, uh, you know, less uh, times where it just actually doesn't work. Okay, so now what we have to connect in is our screens, which you can see here, we have a lot of screen uh, connections. And now the really interesting thing is here. Here we have the graphics card. As you can see here is my graphics card. And to this, we'll need to connect all, all our screens. We can actually connect our screens here to a HDMI. We also have a DVI. Uh, and we can connect it there, but then we will bypass our graphics card. And then we'll lose a lot of screen, you know. Um, we'll, we'll lose a lot of computing power by having our screens connected up to this one. So don't do that, you know. Don't do that. We need to have our screens connected up to the graphics card itself. Okay. So what connections do we have? Well, we have a VGA connection. And uh, my graphics card doesn't have it. I have an old screen with VGA, which is, I use as an extra screen. And, uh, well, many motherboards actually have a VGA connection on it. And uh, try to not be tempted and connect it into the motherboard. Connect up the VGA to the graphics card. 
You can see it doesn't have a connection, but uh, to solve that, I have this beautiful little adapter instead, as you can see here. This is a DVI to VGA connection. Now, VGA is always analog, and DVI can be digital, like this one, or analog, uh, like this one. This is not actually analog, this is mixed. So this in this input, you can have both um, analog and digital, and this you can have only digital, if I remember that correctly. And this one, you can see it uh, has the same kind of connection like this one. It works uh, for analog connections and mixed connections. And I'll put the VGA. So what we'll do is connect in the adapter. And in this adapter, we can connect in our VGA screen and it will now use the graphics card and not bother the motherboard. And be sure to tighten these properly because VGA is analog and if they're not connected properly, uh, you will have flickering screen and stuff like that. Now this is a little bit modern. It's my real nice, um, what is it? Nice uh, 144 display. And these often uses dip display ports. That's kind of the newish connection, I don't know. And this play port uh, usually is present on your graphic card. We can see we have an uh, HDMI there and a display port there. So we'll connect it into display port just like that. All right, then we have one screen more. I have this one, which is a it's a DVI again, and it's a digital DVI which you can see on that. So uh, the digital uh, DVI, now it needs to go into the uh, this one, of course. And we could connect it up to the motherboard, but then we bypass the graphics card and we don't want to do that. So just connect up all your screens to your uh, uh, graphics card and not the motherboard. Now I'll need to use a screwdriver to kind of uh, uh, fasten this properly so it doesn't flicker. And that should basically be that. So I believe we have connected up everything. I'll just fasten this. But uh, now you can basically, you know, turn this apparatus on and we can start using the computer. And uh, well, I'm going to, of course, uh, yeah, close up the computer now when everything is connected up. So if we have uh, forgot anything, let's see here. Um, this you can use for mouse and keyboards. Um, if you have an older type of connection, this is for connecting up Wi-Fi antennas because this motherboard uh, in here actually has a Wi-Fi chip on it as well. And if you have more advanced sound systems, you can use these other ones there. And uh, HDMI is very common. And here we have an HDMI connection. Try to not use the HDMI on the motherboard as you will then bypass your graphics card. So that's basically it, and um, well, make sure actually to have your computer closed and all when you turn this on, because this is high power. Uh, never open your power supply. Uh, these capacitors inside it can basically kill you. Uh, they're dangerous, so uh, be respectful with your um, power supply, and try to not buy the cheapest weird power supply, because um, it has a higher chance to kind of blow up. Try to buy some at least okay brand. You can uh, get secondhand ones as well, you know. Um, but you want to make sure it's good, good stuff. Well, anyways, uh, uh, now I don't have it on this one, but uh, you can of course have uh, usually like other types of uh, display connections on your graphics card, but try to always use the connections on the graphics card and buy adapters if you have to. I suppose that's that. So um, thanks a lot for watching. I hope it helped you and I'll see you in future videos. This is your host, Jim Adesen, signing out.